What's up, y'all? Your girl's back with another podcast. And I'm coming forth just to talk and see if you guys are doing okay. Because I know the times that we're in right now is making us, like, want to go the opposite route of how we would normally choose within our purpose. But that is a setup. I want you to challenge yourself to just find the peace. Find the peace in Christ. Like, your Christ-like identity, your purpose, heaven. Um, maybe it's reading your word while your candle is lit in the tub. I don't know. Like, maybe it's sitting on a couch with your cozy PJs. I don't know. Like, I'm just shouting some things out, okay? Maybe it's going for a stroll in a nice park area with your Bible. Like, bring Jesus. That's all I do know is everywhere you go, bring Jesus. Bring Jesus. Bring Jesus. Bring Jesus. As I was talking to God, we were talking about isolation. And sometimes when you're in isolation, you become so close with God that you tend to drown out the noise of the world. But being in that, there is a fruit that is producing such a new vehicle. And yeah, we just went, we just hop, skip, jump, you know, took a whole little picnic basket up to the incline, right? Like how she just start off here walking in a park area and then she in a car and like, that's how God be, let's just, let's just ride, okay? And so as we realize that there are so many obstacles in this world, but yet every trial, you know, we get the opportunity to overcome it with Christ. And so if you're gifted, you're probably seeing or hearing the negative side and it can make you feel overshadowed by so many excuses on what will make you look back. But one thing that has helped me during this journey of being with God in the isolation process is remembering what Jesus sounds like. When you don't hear the word of God, you find his word, okay? And I say word, I mean audible messages, you know, God talks to us how he chooses. And so there are times where he will stop and you'll be silent, but you hear him in your body and your body speaks volumes. His silence speaks volumes. And so disconnecting from what your flesh would like to feel the comfort in doing. You, you hit the pause button on the replay of scenes that wants to go over and over from an area of life that you responded to certain situations by it being your only reaction. When you're in isolation, God is cultivating you. The promise that he given you is my God being cultivated. And so the memories of certain situations or obstacles of who you used to be can sometimes try to come over like the like a wave, okay? And so I thought this funny thing to say to God earlier was like, Lord, you know, there was be there used to be a time where I remember the wave would just come, hit me, boom, and then now I'm just sitting over here laying on the sand. But see, there's this time in my life where the wave is coming and I'm noticing it's coming and I'm discerning what to do and I can reach towards you and I can say Lord realizing that you are Alpha Omega beginning and the end the one who put the boundaries between the sand and the water you can raise me higher over the hurdle so when I thought like that it was a laugh instead of a cry right and so these are the flip sides of where we can go with God on every circumstance and obstacle metaphorically speaking poetically speaking we're just riding and I feel like we just start driving right we driving now you know when you're driving in you got the car and the, 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 it's just moving you may have Pull the roll the windows down, or you may even pull the car over. Who pulled the car over, child of God? And just need a little bit of breath, breathing, just relax. You know, give that anxiety over to Him. You know, I keep seeing in my mind the rooftop, right? The rooftop is open. The rooftop is open. There are so many different scenes and so many different ways to experience a rooftop. Okay, open, a open rooftop, right? And so it could be through my experience, like Lord, ooh, I always wanted a rooftop with the rooftop open, driving, you know, I was saying, just having that experience on vacation, just riding down the road with the rooftop open, right? But then there could be some other experiences where the rooftop just giving you that experience that just makes you feel free, like you could just be soaking up the freedom of the wind of what's provided in the movement of the car that is baking, and the obstacle is just like all the way underneath your feet, and there's nothing in the way. The gas is not full, and so it's just giving very much so. Like, let's go ahead and speak. You know, let's see. There's always some ugly situations that we got to worry about that we got to make sure we keep in an eye for. You know, like red light, green light, you know, yellow light, <laughs> blue light. Give it up. You must have seen my brother. You remember that movie? What they say? Red light, green light. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving. Yeah. But long story short, there are certain things that we can choose to um, go forth on without actually having to battle with worry about. You know, if we choose faith, if we route that thing towards heaven, because I keep seeing how there are so many, once you worry about one thing, let's say the rooftop open, blowing the wind coming, then you pretty, you know what I'm saying? You know, the thing was always giving pretty, and then the hair flowing in the wind, or if you got a scarf on, you know, like a little scarf flowing or whatever, a little sunglasses on, like do the mirror check, you looking nice, you know? And so when you in there, you're just talking to Bob, you got your music playing, you're just talking to God, right? It's just like, there's not a care in the world. But see then, when you're driving so long without not a care in the world, when one care hits you, like it's yellow light here, you gotta stop, boom. 
then we start noticing like oh yeah i forgot that there is police that be watching on the low low you got to be checking this once you checking that now you checking that and then you checking that and then the enemy come and it's like ill it's getting very much so ill but see this is where your sister came to motivate you because i truly understand what you're going through and so as this time makes you want to look at these things and these obstacles or these trials in such a way that can make you decrease to just give up don't because when you don't give up, you're stretching. When you don't give up, you're stretching. And when you're stretching, God is doing a work in you that you cannot see. But see, when you cannot see it, it doesn't mean that it's not producing. But see, when it is producing, you're going to perceive it. You're going to discern it. You're going to understand it. And so if you take the rise on what it is you're doing, you're going to realize that you're birthing. And as you're birthing certain things that is just happening, you have to understand that you, you, you are in God's hand. And so he sees things further down the line. And so what may be once, you know, we could take the comparison route, which is not even healthy, it's toxic. Because it's coming from a toxic mind. Mindset, but maybe where our flesh used to take it to be like, you know, I'm just do this the way that I used to do this because uh, I'm comfortable with this. No, that ain't the route, you know, or I'll just go over here and do this because this getting on my nerve. You know, that ain't the route. That's our flesh talking. Our flesh be talking too. But see, God is right there. He never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus is literally in the pushing with you. So I'm in the pressing, you know, bringing new wine out of you. Okay. Okay. Baki. Go check out our sis Tyrion. Tyrion got a song called New Wine. I love it. It's in the pressing. You are making new wine. I always don't remember this part, but I'm a perfect girl. I'm trying. So I yield to you and to you. Something, something, something. But it's about yielding. Now, I bet you the part that I don't remember is very much so knowledgeable and teachable to all of us and especially me. Because the enemy always wants to come up with these little ugly tactics to try to make you miss what. He wants to try to steal, try to God, steal, kill, and destroy. But we rebuke the thief. We rebuke the robber. In this season, I definitely want to pray over you right now. I want to pray and ask God that everything the enemy is trying to do on your mind, on your heart posture, on what God is cultivating, creating, and birthing, that he will be caught right now here today in this moment. And God says in our word, if any, if any, if any enemy is caught in our home, he will pay us back seven times fold. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, read Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. We rebuke the madman spirit and spell work. My God, after everything that tried to come for you, Lord, listen, he said there's going to be a payback season. He says payback so much so that there will be a bountiful expectation. He says there is boundaries of the land. I flipped to it for y'all ezekiel there's a previous podcast when we first was birthing this you guys you want to go back and get those 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 uh seasons of the milk of the podcast because they're so soothing i had to do it the other day and it's helpful towards your journey of when you get to those times where you feel like you're being pulled really low i'm saying this because i remember doing one regarding ezekiel and it was regarding chapter 47 to 48 and it was so fruitful it was talking about how there are seasons of our life where when we follow and obey Jesus and we take his lead on every circumstance, no matter if it's what we're doing at the hour, what we're eating in that moment or where we're choosing to go, each level that you choose to have the faith of him on, he will pave the way. He will order your steps. He will get you through it. Even if it's you feeling frustrated trying to complete a task. He is the, the I'm trying to tell you, listen, the way, the truth, and the life. So every time he comes back to you, when you're in the purpose, even if it's the frustration that you're in, you have to expect to receive a fulfillment. As we've seen what happened with Peter. He loved Peter. Peter had a low moment, but when Jesus came back to him, he didn't blame him for the low moment. He actually told him. That I'm here to bring you um, blessings on top of blessings and breakthroughs on top of breakthroughs. So much so that I need you to feed my sheep. <laughs> but I want you to get the love for me first. And I want you to recognize who's telling you that they love you. Okay? And so that's the thing. Like, God is here for us. God knows what we're going through. He knows what we're experiencing. So much so that he'll stop what I'm doing to have me say it, even if I'm experiencing it myself. Okay? It's all of us on the mountain peak with God. It ain't just you. It ain't just the influence. It ain't just... It's, listen this journey we all experience trials and tribulations no matter if you're not yet on the screen of your purpose but yet experiencing the previous birthing to get to the purpose or, or if you're in your purpose and you have a podcast or you have certain things that God has you working on whoever God has chosen to gear you to listen to trust in the process because everything that he does has a simplicity of like sensitivity towards what he's doing and mastering your focus with him so there are things that just make you want to pull away from it or you feel led to listen to it But at the same token, it's like all right I don't get listed this much just like a baby can only be fed so much you understand And so then it's like but why can't I do this you're crying out to God your body is crying out It was like at one moment I ended up not knowing that I was going through certain things that my body was talking to Jesus about that I needed to actually get down humble before him in such a way that it's receivable to heaven If we get frustrated if we get too much um, into our fleshly operation then how could we be received by heaven? 
When Hannah went through what she went through, she didn't retaliate through the bitterness that was trying to knock at her door by Penina of what she thought she didn't have. She immediately hopped towards heaven of what she could have because she realized that God is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. She realized that Jesus, the morning star, the off root, the, off root, the root offspring of David. She realized that the promise was within her. She realized that she had a birthright. She realized that her name was written in heaven. She realized that her, her story was a different story, that it was on a next caliber level, that it was a purpose that was attached to what she is and who she was, like who he was producing her to be. So it caused her to rise higher than what she could have retaliated, than what she, sh she could have chose to retaliate to, Penina's. You know, we ain't gonna go there. Penina, goodbye. <laughs> you don't get no credit over here. You know, just like we had to do the enemy. He's so ugly. Very much so stupid. Let's take a slow time while we say stupid. My sister in the back, you over there like, st 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 uh, 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 take your time with it. I know. Oh, pit. You know, I just don't like her. Don't get along. So anything that you don't get along with or you don't like is highlighting there's an enemy around you. Now, what he's doing on the other side, you probably don't know. And who he connected to when it comes to people of your past, you probably do know. But it's going to take you to route beyond the Penina. It's going to take you to route beyond the lack. It's going to take you to route beyond neglect. It's going to take you to route beyond setbacks. It's going to take you to route beyond the snares. It's going to take you to maybe sit at the screen of where God called you to be for four hours at a time telling yourself you can do this you can do this you can do this you can do this but without the frustration it's in the moments that you showed up that Jesus is in there with you it's in the moments that you keep saying listen I was doing this too I was like Lord I'm here I'm here but then there was a portion of my body that was speaking from previous times when I was having to like motivate myself from a place that I used to you know I was experiencing pain and I taught myself how to overcome pain through a, to me, which I perceive it as toxic because now I know what life with Jesus is like and it don't have to be that way all the time. But see that, it was like a go-getter mentality to the point where it was like everything I did revolved off, if somebody give me some negative, I'm going so hard to the point where it feels like that's something I need to prove. But the proving wasn't to myself. It was to the person. And when anything get like that, it's toxic because this person could very much so not even be thinking about you no more. But you done ran your whole field in the operation about this person or what they said to you. And so that's based upon your feelings and your emotions, which is a snare and a setback. And so when you get over that and you actually heal from what people say are wrong to you, you understand wrong is a field of error and a field of error can stem from a field of sin. And so when you look at sin, the, walk, the, 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 the road becomes broader because are you in sin too? <laughs> And when that happens, you tend to look at Jesus because you're like, that's my rescue, right? Your rescue is what brought you out of sin, your cure to it, to subdue it. And so when we route to Jesus as our incline to, towards every single detail of our story, it's an open communication, an open door, way to heaven for us to route exactly where we belong. I heard the Lord say drought is lifting off of his children, of his people, because we were never born with drought. That was not supposed to be our portion. Hear me now, hell yeah. That was so flat. It's not your portion. Hear me now. <laughs> Ja'Kalen Carr, go look her up. Worship, worship, worship. Anytime there is warfare, anytime there is times that you're just not feeling like the self that you know that you are capable of feeling like, feeling like you want to put pour out your spirit of Christ for one. You may need to cry a little bit, grab some tissues, or maybe not, grab the flow if you need. I don't care, get what you got to get out. And still create the space and environment for your soul to breathe a heavenly ram and so that you're 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 bringing life into that joy of your baby you are god's child no matter what you go through the ups and downs he's there jesus is here with us he's the mediator between us and god humble yourselves that means pride gotta be like as god go ahead and smack the head of Leviathan so you get out your way and so sickness it is not your portion failure it is not your portion i'll just throw some things i'll add to it like it ain't your portion deceit it ain't your portion hear me now i heard your story is gonna change somebody needed a change somebody was desiring for their story to change what do i need to do lord for i to get the outcome that i'm looking for i know what it looks like to get the shorter end of the stick but i come to tell you even with the shorter end of the stick god said those who be least in the kingdom be the greatest so if you pull the shorter end of the stick and you looking like you got the lesser cards and it's looking like a story that my god you it's impossible for you to win baby with jesus everything is possible you you just caught your win with the short stick in your hand with the red flags if you got a boatload of red flags i remember what that looked like i carried a bunch of red flags to jesus hear me now and he grabbed them and he took them. He gave me one yes. The one yes. Hear me now. 
the one yes, which was him, you know, allow the truth to breathe in me. One thing I know about the truth is the truth gets out to Christ and it's told in the right hands in the right way. It's, it's such a, it's, it's a freedom. It should exit ticket. But see, the exit for you end up being savior, saving for everybody. Hear me now. I mean, everybody need it. Hear me now. I mean, we all be eating. Hear me now. And so that's why you show up the way you show up when you're showing up and you're feeling led to go. Even if it's just for a little bit on this hour and you go back to it again. Everything that we touch turns to gold as a chosen one, as being the reflection of God's hand upon us. We got to take the route of what the Bible says in the incline on our focus of purpose. When we want purpose, here now, and not personal, we all have to let go of issues and arrive towards the peace of Jesus. Go catch that last podcast, Peace Treaty, because right now your healing is your breakthrough. So, so it's ugly. Mm -hmm. It's very much so ugly. I get you. Uh, we got fellowship. We got the kingdom. Re we got the kingdom being rebuilt. We got kingdom united. We got so many different outcomes and outpours and outreaches and ministries. And what God is doing is marvelous. What God? Let's give God credit today. Hear me now. We sit and focus on what we are right now. We'll sit there forever saying the same thing and huh, complaining. You know, ah, I want to do this. Take me on. I want my dwelling place. Let's start by just praising God in advance, singing a new song. There is a scripture I got for y'all too. I encourage y'all to read Ezekiel, the boundaries of the land. Chapter 47, let me go ahead and give y'all some through obedience. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. These are the boundaries of the land that you will divide among the 12 tribes of Israel as their inheritance with two portions of jo for Joseph. You are to divide it equally among them because I swore with the uplifted hand to give it to your ancestors. This land will become your inheritance. This is to the this is to be the boundary of the land. On the north side, it will run from the Mediterranean Sea and the Heflon, roll past Lebo, Hamath. I rebuke witchcraft covetry. There are certain things that is happening from a false reality. A false reality that, that is tending from an image and likeness of man and ego. And this system reminds me of Bilal, like lukewarm Christianity. It reminds me of Jerusalem, like before they was healed. It reminds me of Lamentations, like when they was crying out. It reminds me of all these things that just like, you know, where in our mindset, we tend to try to leap towards not leech we know leeches you know leap <laughs> yeah i ain't perfect leap towards situations that feed us from an outside portion to just basically get us by but it ain't really gearing us through okay so all they do is make us come back to it and come back to it and stay tuned because your girl about to expose all caught worship for all of the things that's trying to come baby witchcraft you coming down i'm trying to tell you mm -hmm. let's see right now let me just stay here where I am because I just want to, I feel like we're cruising. We're cruising in a car about to just pull over. But um, as we move forward and realize the real reality is Christ living through us, we understand that he won the last battle in Armageddon. In Revelations. And so we're on holy ground. The moment we hit holy ground, which is our heaven, right? Which means we touch in our Heavenly Father. Everything that we once knew get left behind. Just like Moses had to leave behind his sandal. <laughs> That's when the Holy Spirit was like, whoa, what? Whoa, whoa. Leave your sandal. You've arrived. <laughs>